Hey guys, welcome to The Gun Shop, and we have Tim Weston from the NGO with us today. And we're going to sort out the facts from the fiction on the general licensing issues over the last couple of weeks, hopefully. hopefully. Welcome. That's all right, nice. thanks for having me. Uh, so I'm gonna hand over straight to you, and what happened? Why are we where we are now? Well, it's, it was a very quick turnaround of events. So back in the early part of last year, there was a legal challenge to Natural England over the validity of the general licenses by an organisation called Wild Justice. And they bought a judicial review against Natural England for the way the licenses have been issued. Uh, that everybody was aware of in terms of the shooting organisations, the farming organisations and what they term themselves as the conservation bodies. Uh, there were meetings in Natural England where they were fairly confident, in fact they assured us that they would fight the court case and they were confident yeah. they'd win or they'd never brought it to court. What, what I understand happened, uh, the case was due to be fought on the Thursday Last Thursday. Last Thursday, so Thursday, I can't remember the date. 29th. 29th. And um, leading into that, Natural England's lawyers had gone through some paperwork and one of the requirements of their own licence from when it changed from MAF to Natural England, Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food, to Natural England, was never met. Which, A technicality, essentially. Yeah, I believe so. I'm not a lawyer, but I believe it's, it's, it's purely on a technicality. It's not a point in law. So Natural England's lawyers advised them that possibly the old general licences were illegal. And they would lose the court case, costing much money and embarrassment. That's what it seems like. So, so rather than fighting a case they would possibly lose and where they'd have to pay costs to the other side as well, they decided to revoke the licence. And that happened last Tuesday, the 23rd, yeah. uh, Thursday was the 25th, yes. and it was revoked within 36 hours. The 25th was the day that it was supposed to be. Yeah, midnight on the 25th. Yes. So Natural England released a press statement at, a, I, I, I think it was 2.35. About that. Yeah, saying they were going to revoke the, the, the uh, general licence. They didn't send the NGO, and we presume the other organisations we have been speaking, the, the full details of that to 15 minutes after they'd put the press release out. So the first we heard about it was when they'd already put when the When everybody release. else had heard it. Yeah. So there was no consultation between the, what they call the stakeholders. And that's, that's, that's all the organisations. That's BASC, NGO, RSPB, um, Countryside Alliance, yeah. NFU, CA, CLA. So there, there was no consultation on, on, on the section of revoking the licence. The first we knew about it was when they decided they were going to do it. Which probably happened a few hours before they made a press release statement on it. Yeah, one I mean, would that, that, yeah that'd be speculating, but one would have thought so. Yeah. Um, For them to not give the courtesy of at least saying, yeah, oh, it, guys, it, it, it was a, a very rushed through decision. Now, from what I understand, the the organisation Wild Justice that took out the original court case were asking it for the general license to be re-reviewed in January 2020. So uh, uh, they didn't want it revoked within 36 hours either. Mm -hmm. they, 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 all they were asking for was the licences to be reviewed in 2020. So Natural England made a very quick decision. Well, it's very interesting. As I, we all, we're all currently demonising Wild yeah. Justice, and I understand some of their policy and some of their requests, having read their uh, manifesto, if you like, is a little, yeah. a little extreme. But for the majority, like you say, actually, to say they wanted it reviewed, it seems Natural England have taken a little bit of a step too far, maybe, or a knee-jerk. Or just was money saving because they didn't want to go to court. I, I honestly don't know because I'm not in, in the internal workings of natural England. I, be, I believe their lawyers asked them or advised it them would that be it was illegal. Yeah. And I think once a government body discovers something they're doing is illegal, they must stop it immediately, yeah. and that's their take on it. Um, I mean, let's cut to the chase. If, if there was no legal challenge to the general license, we'd still be operating under the old general license. Uh, yeah. Thousands of yeah. songbird wild. Uh, curly nests, grey partridge nests and pheasants nests wouldn't have been um, destroyed in the last week. Yeah. And my personal opinion is UK wildlife is in a worse state now than it was a week last Tuesday. I would agree with you. And it's only going to get, get worse. Yeah. yeah. Given that it's not just the breeding season for the birds we'd like to protect, it's also the breeding season for the birds that yeah, are, exactly. were on the general licence. Exactly. Exactly. So everything happens in spring. Timings-wise, it's the worst possible time from a gamekeeping point of view 
um, you couldn't you couldn't have the general license revoked at a worse time of the year in terms of wildlife protection. You know, I really think that. I think in terms of crop protection, it's not as problematic. No. But it is problematic. So let's not pretend there isn't a problem there. There is. Um, and in the next few weeks, in fact, some will have even started now. People are going to start drilling maize. Some forage maize is always yep. in the gra- already in the ground. Um, and that's a big problem with rooks. Yeah, we've all seen the rooks walking along a row of maize. Going straight down the lines. Picking up. A lot of maize is growing for biofuel now, for digesters. So potentially, I mean, this is really far-fetched, but potentially we're going to be impacting on um, green energy because we're not going to be able to grow as much as it. So, so, so the, it's well, far-reaching. It goes, reaching. Further, it goes further, yeah. Uh, if you think from a green perspective, is we already import like 48% of our yeah. food in this country. Uh, and that is only going to get more if we can produce less. Yes. And that, that's not a green thing to put stuff on a ship and bring it a thousand yeah, miles to absolutely. us. It's from a world view of health and conservation perspective, it was a very silly, it's a very silly thing to do. It is, it is. I mean, at, at the minute, the NGO's main focus is, is sorting the mess out. Okay. So that's where we are. That's what we're focusing on. And, and we're in terms of staff for a small organization, but we are working with all the other organizations and I, I've got to say the joined up working is working really well, and it is it is almost twenty four hours at the minute. Wow! It's 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 been full on for ten days uh, with no let up. And all the organisations are working together properly. I mean, there's Absolutely. obviously from a community perspective and a community standpoint, is everyone's very angry um, that the the organisations didn't have a crystal ball, but yeah. they are working together, and it's not it's not that's good to hear. It's reassuring to hear yeah. that everyone is actually pulling together, which is everyone is what everyone's been calling for. It's nice to hear yeah. from first exactly. hand that it's actually happening. Yeah. So I think I think the thing we've got to understand with the organisations they they are going to be different. They are going to be differing views because they represent different parts of the shooting sector. Yeah. Um, you've got the likes of the NGO who are at the I was called the pointy end. We're at the people who provide the sport. Yep. You know, without gamekeepers, really there is very little meaningful shooting in the UK. And when we say gamekeepers, we don't mean the gamekeeper on the shoot on Exmoor who's got five underkeepers. We, anyone who's a gamekeeper in, within our organisation is a DIY syndicate who are doing gamekeeping. They're still gamekeeping, so we count them as gamekeepers. So even if you're in a walk one, stand one shoot, you're feeding pheasants, you're, you're, you're producing wild birds or duck ponds, whatever it is you're doing, that's gamekeeping. So without those guys doing that, even the DIY shoots don't exist because there's nobody gamekeeping. And so, so that's who we represent. BASC are a much broader church. They represent um, predominantly the shooters and, and so do the Countryside Alliance. Um, Game Conservancy are, 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 are science, are, are science body. They're actually an independent science yeah. body. Science is science. So um, as a group, the, the NGO, the CA and BASC are working really closely together in constant contact. Yeah. and sharing information, and it's, it's a constant round robin. So members of all the organisations, doesn't matter which one you're a member of, be rest assured that your organisation is doing yeah. everything they can. Everyone is, is benefiting from everybody's work uh, at the moment. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's how it should be. Definitely, definitely is the way it's working. Um, it's not partisan, no one's trying to point score to gain members, because it's not about that. Yeah. So it, it genuinely isn't. This is, this is where everyone comes together. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, they're working at quite high levels. The, the NGO are updating a lot. I know some of the organi- other organisations decided not to do that. I receive very, very frequent emails. Yeah, so we it's are, had, it's had, we're, yeah, we're yeah. sending, uh, we're, I think none have gone out today, which is the first day since it's yeah. happened. But there was one or two a day. One or two a day. Yeah. So we need to update everybody as to what's happening. And the reason is because of the time of year and because keepers need to be controlling uh, predator species to protect wildlife and game yeah. and there's so much fiction going around about what's happening and what to do and how to act and yeah. how to gain your new general license and yeah. such that it's actually really handy to have some clarity and i must admit i've read every email because it's it's fact yeah hopefully yeah no it, yeah. What, <laughs> so one thing i will say anything you read on social media or your mate dave down the pub tells you please check it on either the ngo yeah. basque's website whichever one you decide to use and don't operate unless it's absolutely fact. Just because Jeff told you it was all right. Well, it was about two days afterwards where everybody was like, well, I can still shoot them for crop protection. No, you, no, you can't. Yeah. So I was at Game Fair in East Anglia this weekend, and obviously that's predominantly what the, what the chat was. Yeah. And the, it was quite interesting that most of the full-time gamekeepers we saw 
knew exactly what their responsibilities were, what they can and can't do, yeah. as of last Tuesday. I think some of the the hobby shooters yeah. didn't. Or and then then we had we had quite a trench because it was in Norfolk of people who don't use the internet. And um, actually. You can't blame them for not knowing what's going on no. because almost all of it's on social media There's and There's been online. zero news coverage apart from, from the, the other side. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, we discussed before coming on air that, that there has been efforts from our, our side of the argument to get, get out and be yeah. heard, but nobody wants to hear us. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah, it's, it, it's hard work. So again, some of the... We've had, to be fair, we've had very little criticism, actually. I, I don't know what the other organisations had, but the, all, the, all the stuff I've seen in the emails we've had, bar one that I can think of, have been predominantly supporting what the NGO have done and saying, this is you stepping up to the plate, well done. So we've had very little criticism. And I think that's probably because of the regular updates we've yeah. sent out. So it's not just... Well, you, you're acting as best you can in circumstance, it, 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 which is it, it, fairly handy, right? Exactly. I mean, it, it's been a really busy 10 days. It really has. And there, there's also other stuff going on. Mm. The world didn't stop. The, the world didn't stop. So we've also got other, other issues, other meetings, other events... That, that have to be covered, have to be looked at, other things we're watching, there's antibiotic use within game rearing, we're going to start rearing, you know, very soon, well in fact some guys will already have chicks, quite a lot of chicks, yeah. so, so there's, there's a lot going on that, that all the organisations need to work on as well, uh, as well as the general licence, so, so this is, this is, um, it's crunch time isn't it? Yeah, this has created a, a, a bit, of, bit of extra work, but there's, there's always the capacity to, to take it up. Indeed. Uh, so what's next? Uh, obviously, we've all been told uh, or updated by Natural England that they're going to release X licenses from X date and start releasing them. Uh, the beginning of this week was supposed to be a, a good handful, none of which have been released no. yet. How does one act at the moment? Right. Obviously, they left that flowchart that said, if you can wait, wait for your license to be given. Yes. Well, okay, so our advice is there's no if. Do not operate without a license. Okay. Full stop. There's something called the Section 4 defence, which is no defence. So I'm going to paraphrase here. I'm not a lawyer. What it basically means is if you need to, if you need to protect a growing pea crop from pigeons, yep. but you don't have a license to do so, you can, you theoretically there is a clause that allows you to shoot those pigeons illegally because it is against the law. They are protected. Yeah. And then if you get caught, uh, well, actually, illegally, as long as, as soon after as possible, you apply for a license to do the act you've already done. So you're admitting to, 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 you're admitting to uh, committing an offence. But and I then apply, best intentions. Then I have best intentions, and I'm now going to apply for a license to do it, because those peas those were going to go. So that's called, that's what, when you hear naturally talk about the Section 4 defence, that's effectively what that means. Our advice is do not use that defence. It is not safe in law. And when we've asked Natural England if they would prosecute somebody, they said probably not, but it would be down to the CPS. Is it worth risking no. your sport and the sport of many others? No. Absolutely. Well, our, so our advice is do not operate without a license. No. And there's been a lot of nonsense said. Once you've applied for the license, it's then effectively granted. You can, no, that's not true. You, you have to have the individual license, a, a copy, signed copy in your hand and on your person. So. Where we are today, a general license was issued for crows. In the NGO's opinion, that license is not workable or usable with the conditions that are. Do you mind explaining why? Because there's a lot of people saying that without uh, yeah. really so, understanding that. So, uh, the, 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 the devil's in the detail on the license. Always. Uh, always. And there's a lot of detail. So, we've gone from a, a five page general license to the crow license, which is for an individual species, for an individual action, for an individual reason. Yep. Gone to 11 pages. There's things like operating on a triple SI. So you'll need to then apply for a separate license to use the general license on a triple SI. There's concurrent non-lethal me methods at the same thing. Yeah. You can only protect livestock, which does include kept game birds. Indeed. But that's kept game birds. That's not wild game birds or game birds that are no longer kept. The onus is on the user to prove the non-lethal me methods have happened at a suitable period beforehand. So, you know, once you take into account everything that's happening when, when we know crows do kill lambs. Yes. We just feel it's not usable. It, it's made it very difficult. Yes. Extremely difficult. And that's not the purpose of a general license. The purpose of a general license is to allow the general populace to protect a crow. If you see stock. a crow out 
on your lambs. Yeah. You're not going to go, oh, I'm going to uh, put out some things to scare it and put out the deterrents, put out the gas gun and wait a week and yeah. see if that works. Yeah, and not everyone's got the option of lambing indoors, and which would be the ideal scenario. Yeah, it's quite, I mean, there's quite a few thousand pounds worth so. of gear involved there as mm. opposed to just going, oh, there's a problem, crow. Yeah, Pop. exactly. Like it was. Yeah, so, so we believe at the minute you can't do that. Okay. But reading the license. So, so we don't think that's a suitable license. Okay. That's currently the only one that's been issued. Nothing else has been issued, and that's only for the protection of livestock. I presume uh, you have petitioned Natural England and told them that it is yeah. not really usable. Oh, absolutely. So, so several as soon as it came out, within so it came out very late on a Friday night. Indeed. They then had to reissue it on Saturday because they got it wrong. So we're actually on the second version of that license already. Mm -hmm. So that, that shows they got it wrong. I'd like to think, though, over the course of four days, to write a document like that and make it watertight, plus, like you said, they still have their jobs to do. Yeah. They, I think they did well to have it out by Friday, even though it was flawed. I think we'd have rather... Waited a week? We'd have rather had the correct licenses. Yeah. In, so an ideal scenario would be... And nothing happened and we still had the general license. Re reinstate the general license that we had. And that is what the NGO is pushing for. That's what, ide in an ideal situation, that's what we need. We need the, the general license reinstated till, let's say, the 1st of January, 2020. And that gives them eight months or no, seven months to review yeah. the do licenses you, and get it right. Dangerous territory here. Do you think the general license was fit for purpose, the original set? Yes. 100%. Yeah. No doubt. From my point of view, no. But I'm, I'm sitting on this side of the table. Yeah. So we, we had a general licence that allowed us to control crows, certain corvid species, and certain pest species yeah. for agricultural... And we didn't wipe any of them out. That's what I was going to say. We didn't wipe any of them out. The population's are still healthy. They were, they were used for the reasons they were intended to be used yes. for. So it, the licensing system, in my view, was fit for purpose. Um, I, you were just very well self-regulated. I, th I think so. So I, I was I was keepering before I worked for the NGO, and I used the general license to control corvids. I've never been a big pigeon shooter. I used to have people do that. But if if we we used to drill peas in the old way, we would drop them on the field and then plough them in, and that that would just be, those fields would be blue. So if we didn't, if we weren't able to deploy someone to shoot the pigeons, we potentially would lose hundreds of acres of growing yeah. crop. So the, the license worked. Pigeons are not, in, not red listed, not amber listed. Um, they, they were regularly shot for crop protection. Crows and magpies are, are in no shortage. No, you'll never wipe them out. No, and, and the, the people operating using larsen traps and cage traps and shooting. And there's whole laws belted around them to keep that yeah, proper. Absolutely. So they, they were using those traps for conservation or protection of wildlife or livestock, and it was working. Natural England have put us in this position by revoking that license. And it is Natural England that revoked the license. They made the decision, not anybody else. Whether the set was forcing them or not, they made the decision with no consultation. And that, that's where we are today. Uh, so they said, um, I believe there was due to be consultation late summer. Am I yes. making that up? Yeah. yeah. Uh, who was going to be involved in that? It'd be what they call the stakeholders. So it would be the likes of the NGO, uh, BASC. So they would actually yeah. come to shooting farming, yeah. countryside, people yeah. per se, yeah, yeah, yeah. hunting people, shooting people, farming people, yeah. and to ask, what do you require out of this? Yeah, they, more, they sort of more get one, this is what we're going to do, does this work for you? Okay, okay that's how it works, and then you say, we don't like that bit, that bit's great. Uh, one presumes they also go to the people who like wild justice and put it to them, or is that... I, yeah, I don't know. They're a lobby group. They would certainly go to the likes of the RSPB yeah. and possibly RSPCA. RSPB, and the Wild... who are a very sensible people. Yeah, yeah, yeah they can be. Sometimes. Um, the wildlife trusts, um, those sorts of people. Yeah. So it tends to be that the users of the license yeah. get asked. I, I, I don't know if they'd consult with Wild Justice, but um, certainly people like the RSPB who, who, who do use, did use the general license. Yes, indeed. Um, so the, 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 the stakeholders are all consulted, and, okay. and that goes across That's government. Very that goes across government, whether you know they're changing a bus lane or something. There, there is a stakeholder consultation. Uh, is that still in the pipeline? Do you think? I, I don't know. I w yes, because I, I'm, I would imagine. As I'm saying I don't know. Yes, but I, I would imagine the licenses are going to have to be changed. So what they're putting in place now is a temporary measure. Yeah. Well, it's, they're all dated the 31st of, of December. Yeah, yeah. So, so the individual licenses are what you're going to need. And, and one thing we've got to do, we need to draw a distinction. And one thing I've picked up by talking to people over the last week, and I was at a big event up north yesterday, 
um, which is actually about deer, but ultimately all I spoke about were crows. Um, so the, the definitions that are being used, people are getting confused about. So do I need to apply for a general license is one of the, the main questions I'm getting asked. No, because it's a general license. Yeah. But if you want to shoot pigeons, or no, not if you want to, if you need to shoot pigeons yes. today, you must apply for an individual license. Yeah. And you must Which have is still license titled general you. license. On it is, but it's, it's an individual, individual license. Individual general so, license, so yeah. It, yeah. So, so as long as people understand the, the, the difference between the two, the yeah. general license, the individual license, and where we are with it. And for, uh, from the general license I've seen issued to people, they, they actually look quite reasonable, which is... Hopefully, well, who knows? Yeah, I've only seen one. I've only seen one, and the keeper in question, it's around a big pig unit, and they're a wild grey partridge shoot, but they've yeah. had crows removed from it. Because crows are... But only for livestock, so he can't protect his wild grey partridge, so he's now had to reapply, and they want for his... For crows. For crows for wildlife protection. Oh so he's had to send his entire licence back. Delaying it further. Delaying it for another yeah. fortnight or so. Um, Naturally, have just started to issue the first of the individual licenses, and they are trickling through. It's been a very slow process, in our mm -hmm. opinion. Um, every license needs to be physically looked at, but they don't need to come and inspect the land, so they need to actually read and look at every every application. And on the form, it asks what measures you've done to stop, to 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 lead to the the want for lethal yeah. control. So, and you need to document it for each species. Yeah. It's quite serious, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the form's changed. It's not, the, the application process isn't very different from uh, what, if you need to prep fisheries from cormorants yeah. or, or uh, livestock from buzzards, for example. But they've gone from an average of about five applications a, a week yeah. to thousands. Yeah. Well, it would, uh, the site crashed, didn't it? On, their inbox was full by Friday afternoon yes. when it opened, which yeah. was... And they had, you know, they... Well, I, I can't imagine them being any more prepared than we were for this situation. They were going to go and draft 30 staff in and go, oh, yes, we've got this all no. planned within a couple of days. No, they don't have the staff to draft in anyway. No. So, so, you or know... Or the budget to do so. No, or the budget to do so. So these are all issues w within our, our argument, mm -hmm. saying, guys, look, you, you've, you've revoked the licence. You, you've said quite clearly you're going to have something in place in two, yeah. two three days. How? Um, who's They've going got a plan. to plan? Yeah, a plan, a plan would be yeah. great. They, which they did say, give us a plan, yeah. which has been it's totally fallen down the wayside, and well, there's been no comment as to why. They've got a couple of days to release uh, um, seven individual licenses for individual animals. Yeah, and uh, yes, but and then be fit for purpose. Yeah, so I think well, actually they've got 15 more licenses, Jeez. but if you count the trapping, they've got 30, haven't they, to mm. do? So um, the crow one they didn't get right first. Yeah, let's let's. So we, we've got a... This eight, is GL26. GL26, yeah. I'm actually losing track of the numbers now. I used to know them all. But um, each licence that comes out, we are scrutinising it and then going back to Natural England and say, saying yes or no. We haven't seen them yet because they're not out. Yeah. Um, and we, did, we have gone back with the crow licence and said, look, Natural England, this is not fit for purpose. And you said they, they amended that over one day but have not amended it further. No, and we still, we still would like... A, a more workable license. If, if we're looking at it from very much a southern English point of view, it's not actually terrible. It's not yeah. great, but it's not terrible. We can work with it. Probably. Uh, Enough. Uh, probably. I think there are too many restrictions on the on parts of it. But if you're if you're trying to operate on a triple SI, that's which are a lot of which is are most of the area. uplands are. It's virtually impossible. It's virtually impossible. So you know. And actually, we're talking about one license at the minute, one license for one type of protection. So we're not even at the crow wildlife stage yet. No. And we're in, it's the 2nd of May today. So we're, we're banging the nesting period. And I've, I've, been, I've been looking at some conservation blogs over last night. And um, there's two really interesting ones. There's one by a chap who lives in Italy and he's a conservationist, not a shooter, doesn't shoot yeah. at all. And he's English, British. He's absolutely devastated the fact we've lost this licence at this time of year, and he's saying that this is just absolute madness. Um, and then there's a, a, a very famous curly conservationist who, who put a tweet out the other, put a tweet out on Monday week ago, 
saying, great, the first curly nest in Gloucestershire has been found in a long time. Yeah. She put a tweet out the uh, day before yesterday saying, the first curly nest in Gloucestershire has now been predated on by crows. So, you know, and I, that's very sad. Curlews are a really, really pressed species, certainly in the lowlands. And a lot of keepers are doing a lot of good work to protect these birds. Um, not because it's any revenue, in fact it's a cost, it's an additional cost to their employer yeah. to do that, but it's because they genuinely like wildlife. And it's, it's devastating to see these things being, being worked out where a week ago they could have prevented that. You could have had a man with a gun on it for... Yeah, you could have a man, time, yeah. a man with a gun or, or you, could have, you could have trapped the, pro, the crow Crows, before yeah. it got there. Yeah. You know, so, 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 the, so the pair of crows that are building their nest in, in the wood quarter of a mile away are never going to find the curly nest to start with because they're not there so so that those preventative actions the lethal it's preventative what it's actions, all about, isn't yeah it? it's gone that that tool is gone for us unless you've got an individual license which are taking quite a long time to come and what we're seeing is because of the sensitive time of year that the, the, the time scales by the time naturally we've got round to your license application actually the, the six or eight nests you're trying to protect have gone anyway um, and that won't just be the farming and gamekeeping no. communities that have that. Conservationists will have the same problem. Is there, is there an option here? Um, what options do people have to protect bar shooting? What pre preventative options are the NGO pushing in the interim period? Or is there any suggestion of? So in terms of wading birds, the, the only thing that has been proven to work is lethal control. Yeah. And the same goes for game birds sitting a scarecrow next to a pheasant nest doesn't work. You know, hanging a CD up doesn't work. We know that. Corvids work for a couple of hours? It might. Five minutes? It might. The other thing it can do, so what we found in, the, in, in some research that's happened in the past is when um, it, they used to roll the fields uh, yeah. and they'd mark the lapwing nests with a stick. Yeah. It only took the crows about 40 minutes to work out the stick is where a nest was. They are insanely intelligent yeah. birds, though, aren't they? So, so they used to sit in a tree and wait for someone a bloke to stick a stick in the ground and go, wait for the track to go past, and we know there's a nest there. So potentially non-lethal things, actually all you're doing is marking it for these birds. They're very clever. Um, so at the minute, to carry on with the wildlife protection, I can't see that non-lethal methods will work. There is no sustainable non-lethal not, not that I'm aware of. For the interim at least. Not that I'm aware of, but I'm not a scientist. You know. It'd be quite interesting to see what the Game Conservancy and the RSPB say about that. I, I haven't spoken to either of them about it yet. I know the RSPB use fences for mammals, mm -hmm. but um, do, do you put a top, put top net on it? A yeah. <laughs> put a top net on it as well? I put don't know. Put a feeder in there. Yeah. But that, that just breaking the but law let's, slightly. But let's say we did put a, let's say we did, we'd got a license to protect the nest with a 10 by 10 and a top net. That's great. But then what you do when they hatch and they're that big and they walk off, yeah. you know, so, so it, it's, it's far bigger. Than, there, there, than, there is no sustainable method, like you say. There is I, don't, I don't believe there is. I don't believe there is. There's conservation, certainly. Maybe crop protection is different, um, but, but, it becomes you know, a very labour intensive process. It does. Which it will does. increase the price of what's coming out of the ground. Which is essentially food. Yeah. So, you know, we've got to look at that. There, there are other issues that are coming up. So, like I was saying with maize and, and, um, and biofuels and actually maize for animal feed and um, if any of you buy your Tex-Mex mixes, tortillas yeah. are made of maize, you know, so, so we're using the, the actual crop now a lot more than we ever did in the UK. There's a dressing on the crop called Meserol, uh, which is a bird preventative. It's actually for slugs to stop slugs eating yeah. the seed, but it's, it's rooks and crows don't like it. So if you've got meserol on the seed, they tend to pick two or three out, then stop eating it. Uh, banning coating next year, aren't they? Yeah, so yep. we've now lost meserol. So we've lost meserol and we've lost the ability to protect the crop from the, from the pest species that are taking it. It's a double whammy. You know, and that, that's, that's a farming issue more than a gamekeeping issue, but... Uh, we're all tied together as conservationists. Exactly, that's what I mean. So, so the, there's a lot of pressure on these food growing industries, i.e. farming, yeah. and they're losing tools to do it. And I, I can understand why chemicals, I totally agree with what chemicals being reduced, but then to take away the, the other control method from the other biggest predator of a seed is a bird. It's a bird and a slug. Yeah. You know, and you can still do something about slugs. Um, There's organic methods. Th there are, and there are still chemical methods as yeah. well that, that are available. But, um, 
you know, so to say, to, and to watch a rook go down a row and take the mazer. It, it's no different to watching somebody if you put all of your paycheck on, on the table and said, all right, um, do you mind if someone just takes that? Well, the tax man does that. But if you, if, you, <laughs> if you slap their wrist, <laughs> yeah. uh, they won't do it. Yeah, well, but I'm not into that. Yeah. It, it's no different to going, well, it, it's a mild preventive method to stop you losing income. Because that's, exactly. that's what it boils down to at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, it, it does. It does. So I think going forward, um, in an ideal world from, from a gamekeeping perspective, in an ideal world, Natural England would say, actually, do you know what, fellas, we've made a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, made a bit of a mistake. Um, we're going to rein, reinstate the general licence, as was, and then wait till the 1st of January and spend that time reviewing it. We are going to put something in place so yeah, as of the new year... workable and usable. We can do it. Yeah, with consultation with yeah. all stakeholders. Yeah, that would be an ideal scenario. A nice to new balanced. Of yeah. course, there's going to be more words put in it because that's just the way it is. Yeah, and, and more stipulations and more specific. Quite reasons. possibly. But I don't have a reason problem yeah. with that. As Quite long possibly. as it, it's like you said, as long as, as, long as it's workable. workable and usable for the main reasons people yeah. use it. Yeah, exactly. That would be an ideal scenario, and if they can get to that stage quickly. That's, that's good to go, to start with. The work then carries on with the organisations because in, you're then in the consultation phase to make sure that they get it right. Yeah. Um, if this scenario had happened four months later even... It's, it, There'd be less urgency the, on it. From a from wildlife point, from that, point of yeah, view. From, point of England, from a natural England and wildlife yeah. point of view, yes, it'd be na less urgency. It's come at the most crucial, sensitive time there is for wildlife management. Uh, the spring is always the most sensitive time. Um, and that, that's the really frustrating thing, that the timescales and the pressure we put under... Right now. on May Day bank holiday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And actually, to be fair to natural England, they did work through the bank holiday, which for a civil yeah. servant is incredible. But... Um, the, the advice is, if you don't have an individual license at the minute, from, from our point of view, don't do anything. No, I but think that's, that's probably the most sensible that's where option we are here. Now. That's where we are now. Um, the, the, and social media is very, very helpful, but it's as unhelpful as it is helpful. Yeah, I think it is. Um, if, in both ways, you know, both sides. So, so people saying ridiculous things on... Facebook groups, which is part of the course, but it, it doesn't help either side of the argument. You know, you, you've got peop no. uninformed people on both sides putting... Spouting. Yes. Yeah. Venting. And they say things they wouldn't say to your face. It's usually, I, I find Facebook, it's, it's the emotional arguments that come out. Yeah. And so the people who are against us, are every argument they've had is very emotional. And even, unfortunately, the people in power with the people who object to what we do, are very, very emotional in their arguments. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we suffer the same yeah. emotional spouting on Facebook and social media yeah. that makes us all look really stupid because the only thing that we really truly have on our side is science. Yes. On an emotional scale, they probably win because wildlife is beautiful and the, the thought of it being destroyed is bad, even though if you wouldn't understand the bigger conservation picture, that's what I'm yeah. talking about here. Yeah, no, I, I, I think... I think so, but I think all the actual, the real conservationists agree that wildlife... Scientists. Scientists, scientists. yeah. Conservationist is a very strange term. Yeah, but not... People <laughs> label themselves as it. But if you've got a degree, you're a scientist, so some of the big uh, pragmatists will call themselves scientists. So, so I, I, I think if we use the term conservationist, to true conservationist. Yes, to, which which would encompass a gamekeeper. Science-based conservationist. Exactly, which would encompass a gamekeeper and an RSPB warden yeah. and a wildlife trust employee, um, the woodland trust. Anybody et involved in looking after yeah. the, the zoological that we society. Appreciate yeah. exactly. Most of those people can take the emotion out of the argument. Yes, and just like you're saying, and I I, I, I think that's where you get the most sensible debates. And that's where you get some really good discussion. Discussion, yeah. Um, There's usually very little disagreed upon between people who understand the science of both of the I, argument. I, I think so, and that that's where you can see people saying the general license is is being used. Um, 
it's when you go to the extremes of anything. Basically, what you've got is you've got a curve, right? So you've got a curve like that. Yeah. And in the middle of the curve is, is 95% of the population who are fairly level-headed, understand things, read things. If and something was presented to them properly, would understand. Exactly. And, and, and quite frankly, are pretty indifferent. And then at the, at the bottom of the bell, of the curve, you've got the 2.5% on each side that are nutters. And they're the ones that use social media, as far as I'm concerned. And you've got this big 95% in the middle that are pretty indifferent to everything. But can be swayed by the emotive arguments of both sides of the bell. Could, could be, could be. So, so you've got this, you've got this, uh, it actually does have a term in, in um, sociology, but I can't remember what it is. And, and, and that's really obvious on social media. So you've got, it, it's quite interesting, if you look at like, the click-throughs on some of these new, new stories the NGO have put up, you're going to the, and one of them was 138,000 people read it. Jesus. Yeah, which was a lot. We're a small organisation, we don't get that many hits well, on the website. How now. many shooters we have, that's a large exactly. percentage. So on that particular, so that was a click through to the website. I can t we can look and we can see how yeah. many people read the story. On that particular one, which is the largest one, there were only seven comments and they were all sort of on either side of the bell. So that just shows you, you know, the vast majority of the people wanted the right information they, they wanted to understand what was happening. They just wanted to digest it. They the wanted to digest yeah. it. They didn't feel the need to, to jump tell, up and down. Tell you off either way. Or, or, yeah, yeah, or us, or, 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 or say this group of people are doing that wrong and that group of people are doing that just wrong. Just have a little shout. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what we're finding is people want the right information. There's seven want... or eight people watching this now who go, I commented on that. Yeah, <laughs> well, there, Shame. Might, there, there, there <laughs> might be. But, but they, they, I think the comments were hidden pretty quick. Um, so most people want correct, accurate, digestible information. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's what we need to provide and what we are providing. I think sound bites aren't enough. Mm -hmm. I hate sound bites. Um, you know, we've done this today. That's not enough. You need to give the, the actual information. So through this whole process, that's what we've been trying to do. And I th hopefully people will understand where they are. And I think the understanding is far greater. Monday, after they issued the Crow license, um, was one of my biggest days of calls. Mm -hmm. And I think it just confused the issue even more because it was for one species, one instance, one, one reason. Yep. And nothing else happened. And people were sort of wondering what they could do. Um, individual licenses you had prior to the general license being revoked still stand. So um, guys, uh, pig, piggy, a lot of pig units have troll, uh, Rock issues. gull licenses. Mm -hmm. They still stand. Because they're, they're, you had them before. They were an individual yeah. license, but they, they can't shoot the rooks, the rooks and the jackdaws and the pigeons and the feral pigeons and the collared doves. To protect the big feed and the pigs themselves. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, I, was, I was talking to a pig farmer yesterday about. It is for an outdoor pig unit, it, it's, it's not the food that's the biggest issue, it's the threat of disease. Yeah. Because a rook's flying from two units mm. and they use the water trough, they pick up the feed. And in a modern world of outdoor pigs being, I've always been king in my heart, but yeah. they are currently very fashionable, which yeah. is brilliant. Yeah, exactly. But it makes biosecurity a real bastard. And, and that's the key word, biosecurity for the farmers with the rooks and yeah. the jackdaws. Is, and, and more so than crows, because the crows aren't there in huge numbers. Yeah. But so, so gulls, pigeons, you know, yeah. a, a, all, of this, all of the flying... Anything that can pick up one and move it to another uh, and they over do. the course of... Yeah, 20 or 30 miles Absolutely. over a week. Would Absolutely. Like, yeah. And the reason you get clusters of pig farms in an area is because that ground is right for pigs. Yeah. So ideally, you want one here, 100 miles away, one yeah. for biosecurity. Um, chicken units are generally indoors. Disease isn't an issue, but, but we, we're going more and more to outdoor free-range chickens. Which is great. Fantastic. It's, but it's all good. But you, you've then got the, the, the great disease issue. Disease, disease, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, so at the minute, you can only control the crows there. For the livestock, yeah. you can't do anything about the jacks, rooks, um, other species. Well, fingers crossed, mate. Natural England have something sorted by the end of this week. We've only got a two a day, if not next week. Um, yeah. And that's as simple as that. I think we're getting there. Hopefully, yes. I think we are. I think the organisations are working as hard as they possibly can for their members. And you know, I'm here to talk about national gamekeepers, yeah. but but I, I we've been working with everybody. So 
it, it's, it's not an advert, but don't blame your membership organisation for yeah. this. Honestly, they are working as hard as they can. All of them are. So, and we're working together in constant contact. Which so, good. yeah, yeah it's, it's good. Joined up working it, on this issue is the, is the way forward. So, and joined up working in general will make things better anyway. It, it, it will do as long as... as, Pool, long as pooling resources. As, as pooling one, resources, yeah. but as long as, as long as the argument you're all taking is the same argument, yes. which sometimes within field sports is not going to be. Well, so that's why you need different As much as we all need unity and to be behind each other, it's not always ideal. Because no, it's not. Not, not, every, not every type of shooting benefits the exactly. other and not everybody agrees. Exactly. Um, on which note, we're going to stop this segment, we're going to end this segment, and then we're going to move on to something a little bit more interesting, potentially. <laughs> um, uh, so thank you very much for all that, mate. That's um, been really good. Uh, and guys, for those listening to the podcast, this will go seamlessly into the next part. However, for those of you watching the video for the general license information, I hope you enjoyed. And um, watch the next video where we actually talk about something more long-term interest, hopefully. <laughs>